Good afternoon, fam. Just want to put a shout out to the big Lord above who's done above abundantly all I could ask or think, who's been so gracious to me. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them. with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through Him, not through you, not through what you've done, not through what you're doing. It's through the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ. We're going to do some word stuff here on this little time that we have while I'm waiting for my client to show up. Verse 2, grace and peace, those two words, be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Get that. Grace and peace that's come through the knowledge of this word and Jesus Christ himself. So that's how we're getting the understanding of grace and peace by being in this Bible because through the reading of the word, through the fellowship of the gospel with Jesus Christ, through the revelations and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we now have this understanding of grace and peace that came through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, here we go. According as his divine power, Jesus' divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Get how deep this is. He's saying that his, Jesus' divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That power is the Holy Ghost that's given us the understanding and the wisdom on how to ha per have a life full of grace and mercy and have all things that pertain to life, pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, through the knowledge, again, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. It's through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, through the revelation of this Bible. Today, I sent out um, this post with a breakdown on, um, on, on Instagram. And I want it, it sat with me so strongly that I'm like, I got to read this again, Lord. I, I just, it, there's so much. And I've underlined these words so you can really understand. In verse two, I underlined grace, peace, through knowledge and God. In verse three, I underlined divine power. All things pertain life godliness through knowledge glory and virtue i want you if you really want to get on this board with me go and underline that as you read it and take your time and understand the bible says in all of our getting to get understanding so far we've just read three scriptures and we understand that Grace and mercy has come through Jesus Christ. That the grace and peace that we are getting is through the knowledge of the Bible being revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has given us wisdom and knowledge on how to walk in godliness and to stay in the knowledge of the Word of God. That's all we've gotten so far just out of three scriptures. Three scriptures. Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through the lust through its lust and then when i was reading this what came to me was first john chapter 2 verse 16 
This lust that we escaped in the world was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. These are the three things that are in the world. When people say, I am not of the world, what they're saying is that my way is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. These are things that the world and God and ungodly people, unrighteous people, hold on to. But God is saying we're not like that. So he, we've escaped. We've escaped from this lust of the world. And we've come into the divine revelation of the divine power of the grace and peace given to us through the Holy Spirit through the knowledge and wisdom of the word of God that the Holy Spirit has given us understanding to. That is what I want us to understand. It is not by our grace, not by our righteousness that we've been saved. We have been saved through and by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And because we've been saved through that faith, now we have uh, the, the opportunity of having the Holy Spirit guide us and lead us in the revelation of this Bible to know how to walk a godly life and to live a holy life. This is what the Holy Spirit's job is inside of us. Again, we're only on verse 4, verse 5. And besides this, Given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. And he's talking about all this stuff that we're to operate in. The, and the reason we're able to operate in this is for one, we've accepted the righteousness of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross. We've been raised to life with him. We now have the knowledge of grace and peace because we're in the word of God that the Holy Spirit is directing us, giving us the understanding and the wisdom of this word to know how to walk into this word, how to act in this world, how to be godly. He's telling us right here, if you really take this down and, and those words that I told you to underline, I underlined it because they all stuck out to me. The Bible says not one word, not one tither will pass away, but this world will. We have to understand there's power in this word. Just in 2 Peter chapter 1, we've only read verses 1 through 5. And if you've really grabbed, grabbed a hold of this and gravitated to this, your spirit is rising right now. Your wisdom and understanding is coming to a flourishing to understand how we're supposed to walk. People on here, I see people on it right now that know how I used to be. Man, it was only by the grace of God that I got saved. It was only through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It ain't my own righteousness because my own righteousness, according to the book of Isaiah, is like filthy rags. But it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ having the wisdom and knowledge of the revelations of the Holy Spirit being given to me by reading this Bible. Like I said, this is my second time reading these because what I wanted to get into my spirit was why was this sticking out to me so much? And on the um, one I sent on the Instagram, I broke down these these virtues because when you look at it, and I don't have it in front of me, but it talks about what we understand. It says, giving unto diligence. Diligence means to carefully seek out. Add to this seeking out faith. Add to your faith, your trust in God, virtue. Virtue is the power of the Holy Spirit. Add to this faith, virtue. And to virtue, knowledge of the word of God. And to the knowledge of the word of God, temperance, which is self-control, meekness, and humility. Add this to, and add to this temperance, Patience, be patient with people, be patient with yourself. And as you add to this patience, add godliness. We are to walk as new creations, as godly people, walking in the faith and the truth of God. And as we add to this godliness, add brotherly kindness. Can you give brotherly kindness to those who may not be given it to you to show the love of God? Because the last one to give is charity and charity is love he's saying this to give love at the end after you've done all that right but let's get to verse 8 verse 8 says for if now i underlined if because if you do for if these things be in you and abound 
they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you have been saved by grace, if the righteousness of Jesus Christ is in you, if you are walking in the knowledge and wisdom of the heavenly word, the Bible, if the Holy Spirit is residing in you and teaching you and you're, you're seeking God, you're diligently seeking all this out, if you have all this in you, you won't be barren. You won't be unfruitful. You will produce righteousness through your acts through, of love, through your characteristics. This is all a character building se sec section right here. When you look at this and you break it down and you read it for yourself, I mean, really study it. Not just read it or hear it on here, but actually get into it. It's talking about our character then how the Holy Spirit is changing our character. The Holy Spirit, even in, in Romans 12 too, the, the by being ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you can prove what is this good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are to meditate on this word because the word changes the way we think. The righteousness of Jesus Christ teaches us how to be righteous. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that's guiding us and teaching us how to be in righteousness, how to walk in righteousness, right? Now look at verse 9. But he that lacks these things. Oh, wait a minute. He said he who lacks. But he who lacks these things is blind and cannot see far off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. How, how did this person get here? To me, this sounds like somebody that was walking in these virtues and these characteristics through the knowledge and revelation of God and of the Holy Spirit, but something happened and he forgot all this or she forgot all this. It says, if you've forgotten this, you're a far off. You have forgotten that you've been saved. I was thinking today earlier about Matthew. I believe it's chapter 7, 1 through 5, when it talks about be not a judge for as you judge, so shall you be judged. A lot of times what we don't understand is that when we look at somebody else that ain't where we're at, we forget that we used to be there. We can't forget that we used to be there, so we got to humbly come before them. Galatians 6, 1, if you see your brother or sister stumbling in error, go and save them in the, in the, in the spirit, in the spirit of love. These two fall into temptation. There's a greater power when we can walk this characteristic out. There's a greater power when we can actually let the Holy Spirit lead us. Like I was saying yesterday, it ain't about nagging and complaining and worrying and doubting. It's about having faith. We all do fall. That's why we are there to strengthen our brothers. The Bible says to, to bear each other's burdens because at times we need the support. We need the faith. We need the love of our Christian brothers and sisters. So these characteristics that he's talking about and that he's building up here are deep. Last scripture. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and elect sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. This was beautiful. I, I just had to share it. I pray that. You guys got the revelation that I got. I pray that you will understand this. There's a character inside of us that's supposed to be changing. There's a way we think that's supposed to be changing. When people see us, can they see the characteristics of God in you? Can they hear you at work acting like a Christian and talking like a Christian, not getting caught up in the gossip, but either walking away from the gossip or reminding somebody, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? If you're talking about this person, that means all those people are sitting around talking about one another. That means that they're going to be doing that about somebody in that circle to somebody else. We are to be the light. God says we are salt, the salt of the world. If the salt loses its taste, it's not worth anything anymore. God's not just getting us to be Christians to save us to go to heaven. He wants to display his love, his character, his obedience, his genuineness, his favor, his grace, his mercy through us. That's how he does it. That's how the Bible says um, 
It's the goodness of God that brings a man to repentance. Can someone come to you and feel that goodness, that genuine goodness of God through you and in you to want to confess their sins, to want to seek help from you, to want to confide in you because they know you're not going to go gossip at the, at the water pump or at lunch. They want to know, can we find a godly person? God was looking down from heaven. He said, can I find just one? He couldn't find just one. So Jesus had to come so Jesus could die in our place. And then Jesus would put himself in us. So now that one that Jesus was is now living in us. And we have to be that one that someone can come to. Someone can come to for salvation. Can you pray with me? How do I get right with God? How are you doing it, brother and sister? I don't know how you do it. I don't want to go crazy. I want to commit suicide. I was once a Christian, but I fell. And they start going through all this stuff. And you're there in love like like, you know what? I've been there. I've done that. I've fallen. I've gotten up. I've done it all. But you know what? It was the grace of God. And when they hear you talking, when they see you acting out the grace of God, they're looking at you and saying, wow, now that's what I was looking for. And when you tell them, no, that what I'm giving you right now is what someone gave to me which is the grace and love of Jesus Christ. It's the righteousness of Jesus that has transformed my characteristics to walk in faith, to walk in virtue, to walk in knowledge, to walk in temperance, to be uh, have a godly character. We come into this revelation by the deliverance and understanding of Jesus Christ, not who we used to be. So our longing is to be more like Christ. And so... I, you know I can keep going, but my battery is going to die pretty soon. But Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray for each and every person listening to this message, Lord. I pray that First Peter chapter, I'm sorry, Second Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 10, that they will sit and meditate, that they will see where are they at in these virtues? Where are they at in these characteristics, Lord God? Where are they at in their faith? How can they come to you and be restored back to the love and bosom of the Father? Heavenly Father, we all fall short. We all, every one of us fall short in thoughts, words, actions, and deeds daily, but it's your grace, it's your mercy that just does so much in us heavenly father and i pray for that broken brother or sister right now that broken marriage or relationship that broken family the one that's wondering if their kids will come back be the light to your child be the light to your husband be the light to your wife be the light in that relationship be the light in your job that they can see feel hear and know jesus through you through you in jesus name amen god bless you all got to get back to work. I love you all. Believe you me, I love you all. I thank you all for the birthday wishes. I I you all and I want you all to have a blessed day. Amen.